So threshold training, what is it? How do you find out what your pace is or heart rate is? How do you train within that threshold zone? What are the benefits? So I'm going to do a quick dive into the world of threshold training. I'll try and not nerd out too much and give you some basic science and the benefits of doing it. Let's go on with this run and uh, dive into threshold training. <sighs> So yeah, thankfully I'm not on a threshold run today. I'm on an easy recovery run after doing a solid threshold workout yesterday. So I'm able to talk my way through this vlog. And like I said, I'll try and make it just the basics, the key information. I'm not going to too much science and bore you to death. Uh, but yeah, anyone that's new to running or any beginners or anyone that's not really dabbled with threshold running, maybe you've heard the phrase, I'm not quite sure what it means. Okay, so we'll start with the sciencey bit now because I'll try and make this as basic and as simple as possible. So when I talk about threshold training in terms of running, obviously I'm referring to lactate threshold. And everyone's got a lactate threshold kind of zone. Generally it's your zone three. So zone one and two. Again, I touched on that on my easy vlog. So you want to check that out. My easy running vlog covers those one and two zone of training for heart rate. For most people, zone three is your threshold in terms of heart rate zones. And like I said, you've got a window of pace there and that's your kind of threshold running zone. Like I said, most, for most people for heart rate, it's zone three. And for me, just in terms of information, as of, as of today, my threshold zone for me personally is between 405 per K and 422 per K. Again, a port conversion on screen for miles. That's my threshold window. So, at the slower element of that, the 422 per K, uh, that is my LT1 threshold. So again, don't get lost in the terminology, but threshold, electric threshold zone. And then at each end of that is a threshold. So LT1 is my aerobic threshold. And in terms of science, that's when my lactate is starting to be produced. So as I'm running past easy zones, so zones one and zone two, I get into that zone three, and at the start of that zone is my LT1 lactate threshold, which is the point at which lactate starts to be produced higher than when I'm at that easy pace. And then like LT2 on my anaerobic zone is the other end of that spectrum, so at my 405 per K pace currently, and that's when you see a significant increase in lactate again as I move from my last aerobic zone into my anaerobic zone and that's when the lactate being produced is higher than when it can be utilized and therefore it can be cleared quite quickly so yeah when I get to LT2 that's the area of time when you're running quite intensively say 10k or definitely 5k when towards the end of that run you start to get that horrible heavy legged achy legs feeling that's when the uh, lactate is being dumped into your muscles because it can't be clear cleared efficiently from your legs because you're working at, a, at an intensity greater than you can clear it at i've just took a little walk in recovery while i cover the science one more time so yeah uh, the basics like i said the very basics you've got lt1 when you start to generate lactate uh, as part of your running intensity then you've got lt2 which is your anaerobic threshold so lt1 is your aerobic threshold lt2 is your anaerobic threshold also known as the maximum lactate steady state so again that's the maximum you can run at before that threshold in terms of that, that kind of equilibrium where lactate is produced in higher quantities than you can utilize and therefore you start to be dumped in your muscles and that's when you start to get that lactic acid build up in your legs and, you, and therefore it can't be cleared efficiently and that's when it starts to slow you down because your muscles can't contract efficiently you, they're covered in lactate or lactic acid is starting to be built up in the muscles and you naturally slow down naturally fatigue and naturally get heavier legs as you progress so there that's the very basics of the science let's now move on to the benefits of running in those in that lactic zone why do we do it what are the benefits so what are the benefits of threshold training everyone can evidence the benefits of easy running i covered that in that vlog the other day 
everyone kind of understands the benefits of herd intensive vo2 max short fast intervals but what about threshold lactate threshold what's the benefits of running in that zone i've just talked about well one it's your most efficient running i said you're running at a, you're not plodding at easy pace you're not working and overstretching at vo2 max and anaerobic pace and in that zone there lactate is being produced naturally by the body because you're working at that level of intensity but it's also being utilized to its fullest you're not overproducing it and at easy pace you're not producing it at all so in that little window zone there that's when you're at your most efficient your running form is probably at its most efficient when you're easy running like i am now you're kind of plodding your form's not quite as good so yeah overall when running at threshold level you're probably at your most efficient as a runner like i touched upon there the lactate being produced is being utilized for your own energy while it's running so again that's a benefit uh, running in that zone and improving that lactate threshold helps you to run faster for longer so again you're still anaerobic up to lt2 uh, so yeah that's when you can obviously utilize oxygen energy within the body and like i said helps you to run efficiently but the higher that threshold that ceiling the faster you're able to run for a longer period of time before you start to fatigue and finally the more you run in that zone the more your body adapts so again you're running just above that lt2 so anywhere between that lt1 and lt2 and your body gets more efficient at generating lactate for you to use as energy but also gets more efficient at flushing it out and utilizing it as best it can like anything the more you do it the better you get at it so the more you run within that threshold zone the more efficient your body becomes at running in that zone and like i mentioned earlier it's probably your most efficient running anyway so the better you are at threshold basically translates to all other areas of your running easy pace can be quicker your vo2 max will be higher and therefore you'll be able to run faster or slower more efficiently uh, what's your lactate threshold and how do you work it out well there's a couple of ways of doing it the most obviously accurate way is to get a kind of a blood test you can book in run on treadmills and they'll measure your lactate at various different intensities and that gives you the most accurate reading however obviously they're not very easy to sort plus they're quite expensive and time consuming so not for everyone other ways obviously the threshold you like to take threshold is roughly the l22 threshold anyway is a pace you can run at for exactly an hour no more no less so you could do a one hour hard run and basically from the, from the start to the finish you're going to try and cover as much distance as you can within an hour and then your average pace over that hour as long as it's kind of a real close max effort run is the uh, is your threshold pace but again not particularly enjoyable quite hard and intensive to do another way is the way i find out is that most running watches nowadays with the uh, combined app they provide they provide lots of different metrics and obviously the more you use them and your current training they can pretty accurately estimate your fitness and therefore your different heart rate zones and thresholds so yeah i use a coros apex pro and as part of that coros app again all my metrics are on there this is on screen but yeah i utilize those as a pretty accurate representation of my lt1 and lt2 thresholds and the uh, final way is to use the vdot calculator so the renowned coach jack daniels is an online calculator you just input a recent uh, race or distance time achievement so if you did a 5k recently got a pb or a 10k you input it into there yes yeah, so we input a recent run or a recent race into the vdot calculator and it will throw out uh, kind of again an accurate estimation of your different training paces and your different thresholds including lactate threshold so we've uh, covered the science we've covered what it is uh, why it's important and how do you figure out what yours is so last but not least how do we train it how do we get better at it well i said the basics are you find out that zone between lt1 and lt2 and you run within that zone the more you do it obviously the better your ability to maintain that pace i.e the threshold pace but obviously not too much again it's still quite an intensive level it's sub just below anaerobic so you don't want to be doing lots and lots of threshold training each week you will fatigue and potentially run into an injury so yeah the basic guidance 80 20 rule 80 percent of your running should be easy within that 20 percent your quality sessions you can utilize threshold training much like you would do for a hill workout 
or you might do an interval session you can obviously swap, swap, swap and change and maybe once a week get out and do a threshold run and again just basic rules if you're running closer to the LT1 threshold i.e the slower end of that threshold pace you can hold it for a bit more of a sustained period maybe five minute uh, blocks seven minute blocks up to 10 minute blocks maybe and then as you progress and get more confident maybe do two 15 minute blocks etc uh, but again as you're going towards the further end the faster end of that spectrum running towards the LT2 spectrum so just below anaerobic you want to do short sharp bursts yeah you want to start out with short sharp bursts maybe 400 meters 800 meters 1k maximum so start off as i said the shorter the better just to get your bearings it'll almost feel like short anaerobic intervals to start with you don't want to overdo it to start so yeah if you're at the lt1 end of the spectrum you can hold a bit more sustained efforts lt2 end the anaerobic end you want to do shorter sharp bursts with recoveries afterwards so again walking recovery let the heart rate come back down get your breath back and then do another rep and again safely and gradually build it up and obviously your fitness will increase gradually but yeah that's it that's it in a nutshell threshold training what it is why it's important why everyone every runner should do it and how you do it uh, so yeah wrap it up there give it a go if you've never tried it before like i said it's an area where i've done bits of dabbling in the past but i'm going to give it a real focus over the next few months so yeah as i progress from 10k training which i've just finished which is obviously sub threshold for me as i can do it in less than an hour for 10k i'm now going to progress into half marathon and marathon training obviously the better my threshold running ability uh, that will translate to obviously the half marathon marathon and obviously raise those ceilings in terms of how fast i can run those two events so yeah i'm going to do far more threshold work over the coming months hopefully uh, put into practice the theory i've just explained and hopefully reap the benefits but yeah wrap it up there get this recovery run finished all the best we are running happy running and i'll see you all on the next one